Hello, I'm Zippy Duval. I'm president of American Farm Bureau and the host for today today's Farmside Chat. And thank you for joining us again. I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. And uh, I'm excited about my new my guest this week. You know, I tell everybody, Joy, that I travel the country and I talk to all kinds of interesting people. I see all kinds of agriculture. Uh, and today I bring to you uh, something that is really out of the norm, I would say. Maybe not in his world, but in our world it is. And we're going to go all the way down to Louisiana and talk to Joy Olivier about his crawfish farm. Welcome to the show, Joy. Thank you, Mr. Zippy. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, I, I spent some time with you. I think it was in April this spring and uh, just had a great time out there on your farm and catching some crawfish. I actually saw a video the other day. They videoed of us picking up the traps. So I hope that uh, in, a, in a, just a 15, 20 minutes, we can make the people across America uh, know a little bit more about crawfish farming and, and what it's like. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the crawfish himself. I, it looks like a little lobster. Is it Ken? Oh, absolutely. It's a crustacean, just like a lobster. Uh, across the nation, many people are familiar with crawfish, but uh, they view it as a bait a bait uh, in many streams. There's many species of crawfish across the United States. But in Louisiana, where uh, we have one in particular, a uh, common name is the red swamp crawfish. Uh, it's a Procambus plarca. It's the genus species, and it's a it's one of the largest species of crawfish in the United States. And uh, it, uh, it occurs naturally in the swamplands of uh, South Louisiana. And we as farmers have uh, learned to manipulate the environment that it occurs in in the swamps. And we have manipulated that into our rice fields and uh, are producing most of the crawfish now uh, in culture. Okay, so when you say that, uh, give somebody an image of what that might look like. What's a rice field look like? And what does the rice do for the crawfish? Sure. So we've uh, we double crop rice and crawfish on the same acres. Now, we've been growing rice for many years in this area. And uh, rice production requires uh, levees, a water source, whether it be surface or well water. And... Uh, prolonged periods of holding water on, on rice. Uh, well, so does uh, crawfish production. So we double crop rice and crawfish on the same acres in the same year. Uh, first thing we do in the beginning of the year is uh, rice production. We plant rice in uh, March and April and bring that to harvest. And when we finish harvesting the rice, the forage is left over. The shaft uh, provides a good nutrient source for crawfish. And we reflood those fields after rice harvest for crawfish production. And uh, the crawfish actually are in the ground and in burrs. Uh, they, uh, instead of hibernation during the winter, they estivate. It's estivation in the summertime when an animal goes into a, a, a period of a low metabolism. Uh, so when we introduce the water in October, the crawfish come out of the ground, they release their young, and that's going to be our crop for the next year. And it takes about four months for those young crawfish to grow to a harvestable size, which starts in January and February of the following year. So I was amazed when you was telling me how that female crawfish comes up out of the bird and had the little ones up underneath her, and I but I don't remember how many there were. I was there was a lot of them, if I remember. <laughs> there are a lot of them. A nice, mature female crawfish can have up to four to five hundred young. Uh, it's a process of uh, excreting her eggs and uh, and the sperm which had been collected previously from the male. She uh, mixes it in a gelatinous uh, egg form and holds on to those eggs for two to three weeks and then they hatch under the tail and they stay with it for a few more days and then they are off on their own. 
So that's the process. So, Joey, you said it takes that crawfish about four months to uh, to mature before you can harvest it. So do you have to supplement his food source and be in the shaft uh, at, at any time during that? And does the weather affect anything? Right. So we don't we don't supplement anything. We do uh, fertilize uh, the the plant material. And uh, the one we like to use the most is uh, either rice plant or the or the forage behind the rice harvest. But we can also use uh, sorghum Sudan grass, uh, native grasses, aquatic weeds that are native. All of that provides a nutrient source for crawfish. And you can uh, it's it's very similar to uh, cattle, which everybody's familiar with. Uh, the more nutrient source you have and the better quality environment, which in crawfish would involve quality of water, the faster they grow. So yes, environment definitely uh, in affects the growth because crawfish are cold-blooded animals. So uh, the warmer it is, the uh, higher the metabolism is on crawfish, so weather uh, temperature in particular, plays a big, big part on how fast the crawfish will grow. So when I was there, you put me in a boat and we went out onto the rice field that was flooded. I think if I remember, it was about two foot, 18 inches, something like that deep in water. And we were, we were picking up cages, traps. That's um, right. And, so, and you, had those, you had those traps baited with uh, some type of and, meal, if I remember. And I, right. Yeah, an attractant. So... Yes, we like to keep the column of water anywhere from 12 to 18 inches deep. And uh, we have to trap them in cages, similar to if the audience understands a uh, cage for a lobster. It has uh, flues or, or funnels where the, the animal can get in but not get out. And we uh, we put a bait or an attractant such as a, it can be fish or it can be a artificial bait, which is made out of a fish meal and crushed up grain, anything that attracts them uh, by smell. And uh, we, we generally have about 10 to 12 traps per acre. And uh, our farm, my, myself and my two sons, we run about a thousand acres. So that's 12,000 traps. We pick up six days a week, every day, six days a week. Wow. So, so tell us, how many times will you go to that trap on that acre of water? So, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go to that trap six, six times in a week, one, once a day. Uh, we take off Sundays, uh, and we'll do that for four to five months. So, uh, one hundred and twenty days. We'll, 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 we'll uh, pick that trap up one hundred and fifty times. In a year, and it'll it'll have anywhere it'll range from we talk pounds instead of numbers because uh, there's 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 so many of them. We we'll, we'll range from a half pound to a pound and a half per trap every time we pick it up. Wow! So uh, those people that are concerned about sustainability, tell me what do you do about sustainability? What makes you know that your farm of crawfish and uh, is going to sustain itself for the future as far as population right. nutrients right so population is kind of hard to control uh because you can't see your uh your brood stock because they're in the ground and you, it's hard to get count of them uh so population is one uh issue as a form that's uh, a little difficult to control uh more than all their other environmental conditions but as far as sustainability we are producing an ecosystem that is just uh, fantastic for the environment. Um, we're producing a column of water, a shallow column of water that attracts uh, many, many waterfowl and wading birds and snails and uh, larvae of insects. So uh, it's almost an organic environment other than the uh, fertilizer that we may use uh, to fertilize the the plant material that uh, we're using at that time, but uh, very, very uh, beneficial to the environment. All of our environmental friends like the environment and the ecosystem that's produced by crawfish farms. I want to go from 
raising that crawfish to what happens to it next. I, I know when we took it out of the boat, we put it in croaker, kind of like a croaker sack. I guess it was not wasn't a uh, like a feed sack, but it was something similar yeah, to that. Okay. Like an yeah. onion sack, we call it. That, a, that's a exactly right. Sack. That's right. <laughs> right. That's yeah. that's how we 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 package them out of the field. We we put the crawfish uh, over a tree to separate any uh, bait and weeds and debris from the crawfish. Then we put the crawfish in. Uh, I'll call it an onion sack. Most people understand what a plastic thirty yeah. pound sack is. We we. And we put about 33 to 35 pounds in a sack. And uh, they could be ready for market there. We have different markets. Uh, the, two, the two main uh, markets we have for crawfish is selling them live, uh, which is our uh, bigger, uh, most, uh, the market that brings the most money to us. And the smaller crawfish, actually go to a processing plant where we uh, have them peeled and we sell tail meat, just the tail meat by the pound. And uh, that's a big market as well. It's just to the farmer. He doesn't get paid as much as uh, the premium large size crawfish that's sold for live market. So you took us to a little processing plant uh, there in, I think it was Bow Bridge. Was that where uh, it was? It's, it's cl- close to Bow Bridge in, in Henderson. Henderson, Louisiana, yeah. Yeah. which is very, very, very close to Bro Bridge. Yes, and, and I, I remember the young man that showed us around said the name of it was Bonanza Crawfish, if I remember right. It, it, the name of that plant is Bonanza, and if you remember, he said the old the old timer that he bought that plant from loved the, the movie or uh, the cowboy show called Bonanza. It was his favorite <laughs> show, so he <laughs> named his. He named his crawfish and processing plant Bonanza. <laughs> That's <of> pretty. <laughs> yeah. It has nothing to do with crawfish, but it was a good name anyway. Good story. Yeah. yeah. I, and I was amazed, even though you, you said they were, um, I don't want to say cheaper, but what the farmer made less out of you was processing it and getting those tails out. I mean, they were, they were hard. They were taking the tails out in big old dish pans, just heaping full of them. Crawfish tails, and they froze them in a little bag. And I mean, they really look delicious. Right, looking at right, them. And, and 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 they are at home at my home in Georgia. If we're gonna bring a bunch of people over, we're gonna have a, a a pig picking and a barbecue, and we're gonna eat we're gonna eat we're gonna eat pork. But when I go to Louisiana, they feed me crawfish boil, and I'm telling you what is one fantastic meal I got to eat when I was out there with y'all. Uh, tell us a little bit about a crawfish bowl so that people that's never experienced that, what that might be like. Sure, and you're right. Uh, whether Mr. Zip is with us or not, if it's in crawfish season and we want to get together, we always have a crawfish bowl with our friends. It's a, a matter of uh, taking live crawfish and finding them from your, uh, your re- uh, neighbor farmers and... Uh, Probably an average ball is uh, two to three sacks, or which would be about a hundred pounds, and maybe ten to fifteen people. And uh, it's it's, it's kind of like balling any other seafood, shrimp or or lobster in the shell. You want to ball them whole after you wash them, and you want to mix some seasoning and some vegetables, some sausage. Uh, with that, uh, for those that might not eat crawfish, you might want. Uh, some meat or vegetables on the side, uh, corn, potatoes, mushrooms, that kind of stuff. So, um, and yes, it, it's a it's a weekend event for people to get together and really, really big at festivals. We have a lot of festivals in Louisiana, and during crawfish season, it seems like all the festivals they serve crawfish, ball crawfish. Well, Joey, you've been successful in making me hungry. Talk about that, man. <laughs> That 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 is a, a awesome time, good fellowship, uh, and uh, good good food. So, uh, is there any other fun facts about crawfish you might want to share with us? Well, uh, the, the fun fact is is the fellowship and getting together with uh, with with the friends and relatives. Uh, 
So and I don't know if uh, the social uh, part of uh, or behavioral aspects of crawfish as far as being fun, but uh, we do have a good time uh, with fellowship when we do get together with uh, with each other at crawfish balls. Just a little insight, someone. I had a salad the other day. Instead of having steak or chicken on top of it, I had blackened crawfish, and it was absolutely awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, I en- I enjoy the commodity that you grow, and uh, I appreciate you taking time to show me around your farm and be able to experience harvesting those traps and seeing how they're uh, uh, they're processed and 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 being able to enjoy that food with y'all one night. So thank you for that. Uh, if our listeners want to learn more about crawfish or maybe how to cook them, you got you got any insight you can share with them of where they can learn that at? Absolutely. Uh, just go go on the internet and look up uh, Louisiana crawfish, and we have a lot of retailers that are ready to ship crawfish or all over the country. Uh, we're we're not uh, in the premium of uh, crawfish season now, so you may not get any live, but you'll get some uh, frozen uh, whole ball crawfish where you put them in the microwave and ball them and, uh, and then peel them. Or you can get some fresh, fresh tail meat or frozen tail meat available. Just uh, many retailers online, and they'll send you uh, a care package with probably some Mardi Gras beans and... Maybe some uh, some uh, specialty meats, uh, many different things you can order. But they're they're re- they're ready to ship uh, online uh, anytime right now. So, Joy Olivier from uh, Louisiana, a crawfish farmer, rice farmer, uh, now a good friend of mine, and uh, I can't wait, uh, Joy, to come back and visit with you again and enjoy some of that wonderful product that y'all y'all produced down there. Thank you for joining us today. I hope everybody enjoyed talking about a commodity that we don't see or hear much about. Hopefully now that Joy has explained to you how sustainable his operation is, it may make you have a desire to have some crawfish at a at a, uh, at a, at a little uh, backyard gathering that you're having. I promise you, it, you'll enjoy doing that. So thank you, Joy, for being with me. God bless to everyone. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you next time on Farmside Chat. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Farmside Chat. Please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And while you're at it, take a minute to rate and review the podcast. This helps us continue to bring you farm fresh content that everyone can enjoy. Until next time, thank you and God bless you.